If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to John chapter 1. I'll begin in verse 1 here in just a moment. It's the Gospel of John chapter 1. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. That's the NRSV in case you're on Bible Gateway. I just want to say to my church family, thank you. Thank you for having the Bills family here another year. Uh, I am a missionary from Tennessee. Um, That's my home. But... Texas is also my home. Can I have dual citizenship? Is that okay? Um, In the great country of Texas. So thank you for having us yet another year. Speaking of new years, it's always an interesting time when the clock rolls forward, the crystal ball drops from Times Square. We see fireworks in Sydney, Australia one time a year. And we think, ah, new year new beginnings. I've read several people on Facebook that they have have chosen a word for the year. And we even have one of our ministers on staff, Betsy Stratton. She comes up with one word that she wants to live into at the first of every year. It reminds me of this character from the movie City Slickers. Remember Curly when he's riding along on his horse and he, Billy Crystal is in a midlife crisis. Says, Curly, you know, What's the meaning of life? And he just holds up one finger and he says, just one thing. And if you figure out that one thing, everything, well, you know how it ends. One thing. And I wonder, is it really possible to have one thing? To have one word that defines an entire year? This is the question that I think John begins with in his gospel. Is it possible to have one word at which the entire world revolves around. And John's pronouncement is, yes, it is possible. There is one word. This is the word of God for the people of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Word. If you read some commentators and some authors, they'll take you on this journey about what this Greek word originally meant. But I don't want to miss the forest for the trees this morning. And I just want to highlight just a few things that I think we ought to pay attention to. And one of those things is this. There is no way that if you heard these words as a recipient of this letter, your mind and heart would not go back to the very beginning. John begins his gospel the exact way that the writer of Genesis begins that great book. In the beginning. It's the story of beginnings. It's the story of new beginnings of a God who speaks. A God who speaks. When someone speaks, there is an invitation for relationship. And God wanted relationship with the world in creating order out of chaos. Right there at the beginning of Genesis, the earth was formless and void until God spoke. You see, God's voice matters. Listen to the psalmist in Psalm 33. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Isaiah chapter 40, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God endures forever. Then again in chapter 55, my word goes out from my mouth and will not return to me empty. In the beginning was the word, and this is John's invitation to his church. You are hearing a word. But here's the catch. The word is not an idea. The word is not a concept. The word is a person. A person who is sent to be the 
interpreter of God. To be the one that says, you know, you've heard about God, you've heard the voice of God, but now we are going to show you the person of God. God the Father, God the Spirit, and now God the Son. One author says it like this, the world needed an interpreter for the language of God. And it reminded me of a conversation I had once with one of my friends who is deaf. And I asked, what's it like to be deaf? And she simply replied, it's like listening in the dark. And we need interpreters, don't we? For those who are unable to hear, who are listening in the dark. You see, the world was listening to God in the dark and God chose to send, not an idea, not a concept, but a person to interpret the light and love of God. Because with God's interpretation came the person and work of Jesus, the Messiah. And Jesus came to be light for our darkness. Life was the light for all people. Not just Church of Christ people. Not just Baptist people. Not just Methodist people. All people. Even those people that you don't think deserve to be people. All people. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. Is that not good news to begin a new year? That God came not as a concept, but as a person, as light. Because we need light to remind us that darkness, though present, cannot and will not be overcome. And this is a theme that went out through the life of Jesus. The light of spiritual and physical blindness. The light that's shown on death and suffering. The light that enters into dark places and guarantees us that though darkness comes at night, the mercy of God comes in the morning. So we invite ourselves into this one thing, this one word, and we say yes. Oh God, let your light shine on us. So this morning, I'm going to invite two very special people to the stage. And we are going to experience not just a little, but a lot of light this morning. Because I believe that light not only matters to God, it ought to matter to the people of God. 1 John chapter 1, same author, says this. This is the message we've heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness. And if we say that we have fellowship with him while we're walking in the darkness, we don't know what's true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is the light, we have fellowship with one another. So light is just not something God does. Light is also something we participate in. And this morning we are participating in that light, joining the fellowship of God, having fellowship with one another in all the right ways, because in God there is light, and there shouldn't be any darkness at all. So I'm going to invite Carrie, Lee Vestal, and Robin Woodall to the stage, and we are going to experience a little bit of light. Carrie and Robin, I want you to take a moment and just look out at this audience. These fine people that you have asked to be here to witness this. This joining of two who in some ways have walked roads of darkness but have now decided to bear the light of God. In a few moments, you're going to say vows to one another as husband and wife 
sacred commitments that you make to one another. Commitments that you're no longer going to live for just yourself. You're going to live for each other. I no longer is in the equation. It is now simply we. And so these vows are verbal promises, commitments that you make to each other. And you've chosen to take these from the pages of Scripture. And I just want to reiterate what you've already said. You're at your best when you worship together. And so when Paul wrote a letter to a church that was struggling for worship, you know what he said? Love is what matters most. And I can't imagine a more appropriate Scripture to speak over one another. Paul knew that the only way to live in relationship with light was to allow love to be the steady guide and anchor for your souls. So as you say these words aloud, allow them to speak into this present moment in your future as a family. Robin, we'll begin with you. Please repeat after me. Carrie, because of Christ's love and example, Today I, promise Today, I promise to be patient and kind, to, patient and kind. to, not, be jealous or proud. to not be jealous or proud, to not be arrogant or rude, to not, be or rude. To not insist on my own way, and to not be resentful. I promise to reject all wrong and rejoice in the truth. Because in my commitment to you, love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. And love endures all things. And love never ends. And this is my promise in Jesus' name. And Carrie, please repeat after me. Because of Christ's love and example. Because of Christ's love and example. Today I promise. Today I promise. To be patient and kind. Patient and kind. To not be jealous or proud. To not be jealous and proud. To not be arrogant or rude. To not be arrogant or rude. To not insist on my own way. To not insist on my own way. And to not be resentful. To not be resentful. I promise. I promise. To reject, all wrong. to reject all wrong and rejoice in the truth, and rejoice in the truth. Because, in my commitment to you, because in my commitment to you, love bears all things. Love, bears all things. love, believes, all things. love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love hopes all things. And love endures all things. And love, endures all things. And love never ends. And love never ends. This is my promise in Jesus' name. This is my promise in Jesus' name. You have both selected. Well, you can clap. That's fine. You're you're not officially married yet, so Hanks, stand by. Carrie, you, Robin, you've both chosen rings to give one another. I'm going to begin with you, Robin. You know, lots of times you might wonder, you know, why a ring? Well, it's circular in shape. It's never-ending. Can I share what's inscribed on your ring, Carrie? Robin inscribed the date. And then Robin also inscribed her response to Carrie when he asked for her hand in marriage, Robin simply said, of course. <laughs> Not yes, of course. I like of course because the expectation is, of course I would say yes. You realize that's what God does to us. God says, of course. So Robin, would you place that ring on Carrie's finger and repeat after me, I give you this ring in God's, name, in God's name, as a symbol of all that we have promised, and all that we shall share. And Carrie, if 
you would take Robin's finger and place the ring on her hand and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. In God's name. In God's name. As a symbol of all that we have promised. As a symbol of all that we have promised. And all that we shall share. All that we shall share. If you would join hands, let's pray together. God, you are faithful. You're full of mercy. You're full of grace. And God, it's because of grace that any of us stand here today. But I know without a doubt that Carrie and Robin both are standing in grace. Because God, we don't deserve to be here. And I am so grateful that you have brought them together. So God, as we continue to confirm this marriage, this ceremony and worship to you, may we be reminded of your amazing grace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit, we pray. Amen. Oh, sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears I'm not sure I ever remember the first time I was at a wedding where they shared communion together, but I think it's more than appropriate. It's an occasion to remind ourselves that we memorialize that which Jesus thought mattered. And we take bread and we take the cup, and it reminds us of something significant. And as these servers make their way back, I'm going to hand you this tray. And I'm going to go ahead and invite the servers to make their way down. And they're going to pass the bread, but I'm going to ask you to hold the bread for just a moment. And we're all going to take it together with Robin and with Carrie. And as the servers are making their way down, and as you take a piece of this body, I want to call our Highland Oaks family's attention to another extremely important symbol today. This table that we're eating upon on the stage was built and crafted by our late friend Aubrey McNutt. You may not realize this, but one year ago today, we memorialized Aubrey. And I think it's only fitting that we are reminded that it's only through death that life emerges. That it's only through death that hope triumphs over the darkness. 
And as we take this bread, we're reminded that because of Jesus and the light that Jesus brings, the darkness of death will not overcome it. And so we take this bread as a reminder to each one of us that our bodies, though mortal, were meant to live forever. And here's the other beautiful thing, church. We are not only witnessing a commitment from Carrie and Robin to each other. They've already done that, but it's now our turn to make a commitment to them. You're not just here as simple witnesses. You're also here to affirm the light that God gives. So church, if you don't mind, please repeat after me. Carrie and Robin, in the breaking of this bread, we commit to reminding you of God's body and grace to be with you and for you. And as Jesus has given us his body, we, the body of Christ, give ourselves to you this day. Amen. Would you please take and eat. In the same way that Jesus took the bread, Jesus also took a cup. And once again, the servers are going to pass these trays And I need you to be careful. Take the cup and as best as you can, just hold on to it as we all commit to taking it together. I remind us again of John's first letter to these churches. After the death and the resurrection of Jesus, John says, but if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. God says, of course you're going to make mistakes. Of course you're going to disappoint me. Of course you're going to be broken. But my blood is greater than any mistake, any brokenness, because the true light that has come into the world says the blood of my son, of Jesus, cleanses us from all sin. So as we take this cup, as we remember that blood doesn't just symbolize death, but also symbolizes life, we are reminded that this life is for all people. As we take this cup, in just a moment, we're going to repeat these vows to carry and to Robin. Church family, would you join me and repeat after me to carry and Robin. Carry and Robin, in the drinking of this cup, We commit to reminding you of God's light and forgiveness to be with you and for you. And as Jesus has given us his blood, we, the body of Christ, give ourselves to you this day. Amen. As we continue to transition and to bring this wonderful ceremony to a close, there's one more thing yet to do. Light is the symbol for life. And you all have chosen 
to bring the light that is in your life brought about by the God who is Father, Son, and Spirit and have decided to join your light together. As Carrie said earlier to me, light was in the beginning. Man and woman were in the beginning. And God wanted relationship to be filled with light. So as we sing over you, may God's light from both of your paths now burn brightly together. Lord, let your light, light of your face, shine on us. Lord, let your light, light from your face, shine on us. That we may be saved, that we may have light to find our way in the darkest night. Let your light. Shine on us, Lord, let your grace, grace from your hand fall on us, Lord, let your grace. Grace from your hand fall on us that we may be saved, that we may have life to find. Carrie, Robin, please take your bride's hand.
May the God of all grace and the God of all comfort bring you great joy as you have committed your very lives together this day. And may we, the Highland Oaks Church family, take great joy that we have not just been witnesses, but participants with you in the blessing of this marriage. Carrie Lee Vestal, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. It now gives me great joy to pronounce to you Mr. and Mrs. Carrie Lee Vestal. <laughs> there, are, there are two gifts we're going to leave you with. The first is... It is just 11.05, so it's the gift of being done early, so thank you. But secondly, I'm going to ask everyone to remain standing, and I'm going to request that Mr. and Mrs. Vestal would make their way to right in the middle of this aisle, and we are going to pray the Lord's Prayer over Carrie and Robin. If you are a member here at Highland Oaks, we have shepherds available in our library, and I'm going to summon forth Carrie and Robin's, one of their shepherds, James Teague, and James is going to come up and lead this closing word of blessing and prayer, and then we're going to kind of create some chaos and confusion if we could just emerge in towards the center of this space. And I'm going to ask those of you closest to Carrie and Rob, and if you would, very gently, place your hands upon them, and we'll place our hands upon each other, and we will pray these words of blessing. Thank you for being here, and what God has joined together, let us never separate. I would, in I would invite you to Raise your hands, because all of us can't be with them or surround them, but we can raise our hands to God and thank Him for the unity we're feeling right now. And of course, this is a new beginning. But you know, life is a series of transitions, and many times we experience new beginnings unexpectedly. And so I think as if we can walk away today with the expectation of a new beginning just as we've experienced with them, God will bless us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the Father, and the Father, forever and ever. Amen.